Hello, my name is Dan and welcome to my garden here in Essex in the southeast of the UK. So, I'm a very keen grower of fruit and vegetables. I'm standing here in amongst my backyard orchard, my food forest, my permaculture project. Got all sorts of fruits growing. So today I'm going to making a video and I'm going to show you some fruits that you can grow in your backyard, in your garden or indeed at your allotment. Some of you watching this may not have a garden or an allotment. Maybe you have a balcony or maybe you grow things in window boxes. So with a little bit of thought, a bit of creativity, one can grow a lot more than they think. And just because one doesn't have a large growing space doesn't mean that you cannot grow your own fruit. So before we get started with the fruits, comment down below, let me know what you're growing in your garden. And if you're living in a climate colder than the UK, also let me know, maybe there are certain varieties that are bred or are very well suited to growing in your particular climate, which other people may find useful. So use a comment section below to let people know what can be done really. So of course, if you're living in the UK or similar climate, let me know what you're growing in your garden or at your allotment with regards to fruit and you can like this video if you wish you can share it with anyone you think may be interested and if you'd like to be notified of any further information any videos etc i put up please feel free to subscribe we shall start with apples so i've got two apple trees here this is variety gala i purchased this tree from aldi's a few years ago it cost about four pounds and it's doing well here it's carrying a nice crop so variety gala many of you would have seen these in a supermarket and they have good commercial value and the tree it's a small tree it's doing well here and it occupies this space lovely so i found this space and i wanted a little tree to go there and i had this tree so there it went it's doing well over here i have worcester pearman which is an english heritage variety of apple it's an early ripening apple dating back to around the 1870s. It's on rootstock MM106, so it should be a fair sized tree one day. So you can get different varieties of apples for different things. So for example, Worcester Pearman, early ripening. Discovery is also another early ripening apple. You can get cooking apples, Bramley, so they are good for apple pie, apple crumble, and you can get long keeping apples as well. A variety of that would be Winter King which can keep up until around March or April the following year under ideal circumstances. So have a look around, try different varieties of apple and purchase a tree that uh, you like the fruit of. Plums, this is variety Jubilee. I can't show you any fruit set on here because I don't think it's actually set any fruit this year, but uh, there we are. So plums, great thing to grow. You get all sorts of different varieties of plum. Victoria, Jubilee, Early Rivers is a nice plum, it ripens early. Mirabella's are great for jam, you get all sorts. Have a look around once again, do a nice bit of tasting and then make sure you purchase something that you like. You can also get varieties which lend themselves well to making wine if that's what you're into. Pears, this is variety Concord. Now, I can't show you any pears on this because it hasn't set a crop this year. But I think some of this was because it cropped very heavily last year and one cannot expect that every year. And also it blossomed during that cold period, that cold spell we had earlier in the year and that may have damaged it. Certainly didn't help anyway. But there's all sorts of different varieties of pears you can grow. So Concord, Conference, Comes, have a look about. You can even grow Asian pears, all sorts. Once again, choose one that you like the taste of Got a variety called Onward over there, which has set one pair, I think, so that's very nice indeed. Now, if you're in a frost-prone area, there's a variety called Invincible, I believe, which is said to, if the frost damages the first lot of blossom, it can set another one. So that could be very handy, but uh, pears, definitely worth growing. They're very versatile, and uh, this regularly sets good crops, but uh, just unfortunately this year it hasn't, but uh, we can't have everything. Peaches. So you can see this tree variety, Dixie Red, is carrying an enormous crop and they are just starting to be ready. So let's just pick my own homegrown peach and mm, really, really tasty indeed. So Dixie Red, yellow flesh variety. You can also get white flesh variety. I actually have a white flesh peach and that variety is peregrine. So peaches do well. You do have to watch out for peach leaf curl, okay? Now the way that I defend the tree, if you will, from peach leaf curl is I 
grow it under cover. You need to protect them from rainfall, really winter rainfall, to stop the peach leaf curl. Some people send me messages and say they manage to grow trees outside without getting peach trees outside without getting peach leaf curl, but uh, I never managed it. So I grow it under cover. Put peaches on your list. Nectarines, this is variety Lord Napier, which is a white fleshed variety. Once again, you need to be vigilant about peach leaf curl, but nectarines, you can also grow these. Grapes, now grapes are a fantastic thing to grow, in my opinion. They can crop prolifically, different grapes with different tastes. This is Lake Mont Seedless, which is a US variety, and this crops prolifically. The grapes are almost honey sweet. They truly are delicious. If you're living in a more northerly location, in a cooler country, for example, something like Suffolk Red could be a good one to look into. If you're into making wine, a variety such as Riesling could be good. I have a Riesling vine in my polytunnel. And if you want a bigger grape, an example such as Rhea could be good for that. But have a look around. So many different varieties nowadays. Put grapes on the list. Blueberries. So blueberries are great fun to grow. They need an ericaceous growing medium, pH Oh, about four and a half to five and a half. This is otherwise known as an ericaceous growing medium. So they're not the sort of plant that you just put in your garden and hope for the best. You want to make sure you've got the right pH, otherwise the bushes won't thrive and the chances are you won't get a good crop, if any crop at all. So one way I get around it, in fact, I've never actually checked the pH here, but I like to grow them in containers. So four and a half to five and a half pH. And when I water, I water with rainwater because tap water can tend to be more alkaline, so you don't want to be alkaline in the soil too much. So rainwater is good, all sorts of different varieties. Something like Duke or Spartan are good early varieties. Elliot or Jersey are good late varieties. And all sorts of different varieties you can look at. Gold Traub is an early mid-season one. You can look at Blue Crop. Chandler, I think, is another good one. So really have a look. You can even get pink ones nowadays as well. So blueberries, and of course, if you've got a small garden and you want a few pots of blueberries, you can indeed do that. The majority of blueberries are self-fertile, but uh, you can benefit the pollination and hopefully get more crops by having more plants, different varieties, so they can help to cross-pollinate one another. You want to keep them covered as well. That's one reason why I grow them here in the polytunnel, because I've noticed blackbirds in particular absolutely love to eat them. So, blueberries. Gooseberries, so I love gooseberries. Got them under some netting here to protect them. Pigeons absolutely adore these. Great crop to grow all sorts of different varieties. Hin and Mackie Red, Hin and Mackie Green, and Invicta are some good ones. I believe there is a variety called Careless, which I don't think has thorns, so hence the name Careless. You can be more careless when picking them. So these do have thorns, and one can get them in their fingers, get scratched or whatever, so be careful. But gooseberries are a great one to put on the list. Nice red ones here. I think, if I remember correctly, this variety is Hin and Mackie Red. So, gooseberries strawberries so i can't show you any fruits on these because they're finished but strawberries are a great one to grow grow them in containers in open ground you can grow them in towers all sorts of different ways of growing strawberries so i've got a variety of varieties english heritage varieties such as royal sovereign not heavy croppers but really nice tasting more modern varieties such as malling centenary with great commercial value easy to pick and keep well very very nice tasting indeed Cambridge favourite are a English heritage variety, if I remember correctly, they are from the 1930s. Florence, which I think, if I'm correct, is a late flowering variety. You can also get ever-bearing ones, ones that are otherwise known as perpetual, which will keep giving you small crops throughout the growing season. So put strawberries on your list because they're beautiful. Eat them fresh, put them in jam, use them in desserts. Strawberries. Raspberries, so raspberries are great to grow. You can get summer fruiting or autumn fruiting varieties, summer fruiting varieties, crop on growth, which came from the previous year, and autumn fruiting ones come off of growth, which came on the same year. So different colors as well. These are Golden Queen, which are a yellow variety. And I think most of these are finished now, but there is a few left, so certainly worth growing raspberries. You know, eat them fresh, you can make jam out of them. 
put them in desserts. Raspberries, cherries. This is variety Stella, which if I remember correctly, was introduced to the UK in the year 1968 from British Columbia in Canada. The first self-fertile variety of cherry to be introduced to the UK. So it's on a minaret rootstock, so I can grow this even though I have a small to medium sized garden because historically cherry trees are rather large and could only be grown in bigger areas. So with regards to cherries, you need to make sure you cover them up because the birds absolutely adore them. The pigeons are regularly on patrol when this is fruiting. So this netting here does that. This tree has finished cropping now, so I can't show you any, but all sorts of different varieties of cherry that you can grow. Sweetheart is one I grew at a previous address, and this has good commercial value, if I remember correctly. Nice big cherries, but once again, Stella, a first-rate variety of cherry to to grow and of course with the historical sort of points about it a very nice one to grow as well so cherries figs so this is variety madeleine de deux saisons which is said to be able to produce two crops of figs here in the uk so hopefully one day that will indeed happen here so figs you can grow either in containers or in the open ground they are said to benefit from root restriction in order to encourage the tree to fruit more heavily as opposed to excessive foliage. So they do lend themselves well to container growing, all sorts of different varieties. The most popular one grown in the UK is brown turkey. And I think Brunswick is another variety as well. So have a good look around many different varieties of figs. So put figs on your list. I have two persimmon trees here. So I've since been corrected. Apparently the correct way to pronounce it is persimmon, but uh, I've called them persimmon for so long so I'm going to keep calling them persimmons. But anyway, I have two different varieties here. This is Rojo Brillante, and this is a commercial variety. If you've bought persimmons from supermarkets, quite likely that uh, they were these. And I have a variety down here, which is called Fuyu. So, perfectly okay to grow here in the UK. And the Fuyu actually lost all of its foliage, all of its buds, whatever, during that spell of frosts that we had earlier in the year. We allegedly had the coldest spring for 50 years and you can see they are doing just fine. So this has actually set a small crop here. This is one, two, yep, so three. So this has actually set three fruits here. So it'd be absolutely lovely if they get all the way through. So they hang on the tree until well into the winter, maybe in, even into December or January time. So nice ornamental value as well when the rest of the tree has lost its leaves. So persimmon, put that one on your list. So there really are all sorts of things you can grow in the UK in similar climates. So you can put berries on that list, blackberries, loganberries and tayberries, joster berries, currants, red currants, black currants and white currants. And down the back of the polytunnel here, I have a sanguinelli blood orange, which is growing in the ground in the polytunnel here. So we had some very cold weather earlier in the year down to about minus eight degrees C, which I think is about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. And we had, as I stated earlier, quite a cold spring. And the blood orange there, it, it, it lived through it. It's done very well indeed. During the very cold nights for about a week or so, I put a blanket over it to just give it a bit of extra protection, but um, I think it would have got through anyway. So Sanguinelli blood oranges are maybe a little bit more resilient than we think especially when the trees get a bit of maturity about them and maybe they've been given some additional protection, particularly over their young years. So you may wish to look into Sanguinelli blood orange if you want to have a go at citrus in a cold climate. And of course, a yuzu as well is a hardy citrus, which I have over there. So you could indeed look into yuzu. Anyway, there we are. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you like my work, please feel free to like it and share it with anyone you think may be interested. And if you'd like to be notified of any further videos I put up, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for viewing and enjoy whatever you're doing.